What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I'm going to be focusing on an exhaust leak and vacuum leaks, suspected vacuum leaks. I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, so let's just go ahead and, and jump right into this. So the first one I'm going to deal with is the exhaust leak. I think I have a leak at the driver's side header. Um, you can hear it when it's running, there's, there's a tick. Uh, sometimes it's hard to tell if it's a lifter tick or an exhaust leak. Pretty sure it's an exhaust leak because it seems to get louder as you change, as you increase RPM on the engine. So pretty sure I had an exhaust leak. Um, so first thing I did obviously was I pulled the driver's side header. Now, if you've never pulled the exhaust off of one of these small block Mopars, keep in mind that the forwardmost and rearmost uh, exhaust manifold bolts thread directly into the water jacket. I was not aware of this and I kind of freaked myself out a little bit because when I pulled those bolts, I got steady streams of coolant all over my garage floor. Uh, but a quick Google search quickly found that, yeah, this is, this is to be expected. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you are going to pull the exhaust manifold off of one of these small block Mopars, drain your coolant first. Um, so that being said, when you reinstall your exhaust, you have to use thread sealant on that forward and rearmost, on those forward and rearmost bolts. When I installed my headers, I didn't do that because like I said, I wasn't aware that, that, that they threaded directly into the water jacket. So that might explain a few things that I, that I saw. Um, when I was first starting this engine, I did notice some light blue whitish smoke out of the driver's side exhaust before I put that cross pipe in, which would indicate a coolant leak. Um, so obviously those bolts were leaking some coolant into the exhaust, which might also explain my exhaust leak. So when I pulled the header, I looked at the, the gasket that I had installed. Now this is one of those I forget who makes this gasket, but it's not a metal gasket. It's just a material it has like a honeycomb pattern to it. Um, and here you can, when I pulled this, it was damp around the forward and rearmost exhaust ports. Um, that, I don't know if that was from when I pulled the bolt that they got wet or if it's an indication that it was leaking more while I was running it which could have then caused an exhaust leak at those ports. I mean, also, if you look at this, this was the forward, the forward exhaust port. There's some damage to that gasket. Let's see how well it's gonna show up there. So that could have been a source of the leak. Uh, also, you can see that it was wet pretty much all the way up to the edge on both the front and back exhaust ports. So those might've been the cause of my exhaust leak. So, doing some reading about gaskets, I decided to replace that material gasket with one of these. Let's see how well it's gonna show up there. This is actually a steel gasket. It's actually a three layer steel gasket that has uh, ridges on both sides of the gasket around the ports that when this is tightened down, those ridges should uh, get compressed and should cause or should form a good seal around those exhaust ports. So that's what I ended up using. Um, I've already obviously, obviously pulled the header, replaced the gasket, reinstalled everything, and I did use thread sealant, not Teflon tape, but thread sealant on the forward and rearmost bolt. Um, I also took the opportunity to reseal the thermostat housing for the third time. And but that I let all that set up for a couple of days before I refilled the coolant. And everything looks like it's good. I don't see any coolant around the thermostat housing like I was seeing before, even though that was only a couple drops and there's nothing coming out of the exhaust bolts that I can tell unless it's inside the manifold. Um, so like I said, I haven't even, I haven't even fired this thing up yet. Um, I was saving that for you guys. So the next step will be to start this thing up and see if 
we fixed the exhaust leak and then I'm going to move on to tracking down some possible uh, vacuum leaks. All right, so here's what happened. Started the truck, still had an exhaust leak that was worse than before. Got pissed off, deleted the footage. Just, yeah, it wasn't pretty. Anyway, doing some research. Here's what I found, and I am kind of upset with myself for not realizing this. I'm just, yeah, here's what I found, and here's how I'm going to fix it. Okay, so this engine, at least the transmission I know is out of a 78. I ran the, ran the number on the side of the transmission. It's out of a 78 Cordoba, I think. I'm not really sure what car, but I probably, I'm assuming the engine is also a 78. I haven't run the numbers on it. I'm assuming it's going to be a 78 also. I'm assuming they pulled it from the same vehicle. Anyway, so the 78... These heads, if you look, let's see if I can zoom in here and show you. Right here. So there are these ports, these holes underneath the exhaust manifold. There's one underneath each exhaust port right there. Those, I believe, are for smog. So here's what I did. So once I realized once I heard that exhaust leak and got really pissed, um, shut everything down and again, tried to do some research. I decided I was going to try to find the exhaust leak. So took my shop vac, plugged it into, hooked it up to the, the blower side, taped off the other, um, tailpipe and turned the shop vac on, came up to the front, and there was just, there was no mistaking the air flowing out from in the, I felt underneath the exhaust manifold, the center exhaust ports had massive air flowing. I was like, what the hell? Do I have a cracked, you know, headers are brand new. Are they defective? Do I have a cracked head? Which I would suspect the machine shop would have found that when they did all the work. So that's when I decided to drain the coolant, learn my lesson this time and pull the header. And then trying to figure out what the hell is going on. I had noticed those holes before, but didn't really think anything of it. Um, stuck a punch up in there. I mean, and they go in pretty damn far. So I'm like, what the hell are these? Started doing some research again and found that those are probably more than likely for smog control. And that would explain why there is exhaust. Now, what doesn't make sense is why it seems to only be at the two center holes. Um, I didn't feel any air coming out at the front or back and nothing on the passenger side, which is really weird. But I'm going to go get some quarter 20 set screws. I'm going to tap those holes and then take the quarter 20 set screws, put some thread sealing on them and run them up, run them up in the holes. I'm going to pull the passenger side and do that one as well. Just because I'm getting real tired of pulling parts off and then putting them back on. And I don't know if you noticed, but I still had a coolant leak at the thermostat housing still. So I'm going to run out grab some quarter 20 set screws and uh, I'll be back. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna run a quarter 20 tap through each of those four holes. And then I'm going to, I got some quarter 20 by half inch set screws. And I'm gonna seal each set screw with some red high temp uh, RTV, just to make sure everything is nicely sealed. So let's go ahead and get that done. So for these holes, I did go and take a quarter 20 bolt and see how well it fit. And it's a pretty easy fit. So to run this tap in, I don't expect there to be any need for any kind of cutting oil. I mean, this tap fits in this hole almost perfect. I mean, I could probably, I, I even looked at doing like a, uh, like a five sixteenths 
but because of the hole going in on an angle, the opening is, isn't quite big enough for a 5 16 so a quarter 20 seems to be the perfect size for this hole. And this is tap, there's really no resistance to this tap, so there shouldn't be any real need, like I said, to use any kind of cutting oil or anything on it. I mean, that went in really easy. All right. So when it comes to these set screws, I'm gonna be pretty liberal with the RTV. Like I said, I really wanna make sure that these stay sealed in there really well. I probably should have put some, probably should have put some gloves on for this, but oh well. Just, and then just drive in the, uh, the set screws. Now I really want to make sure obviously these go in flush with the head surface just because I don't want to cause any, any, any uh, interference with the flange on the, uh, the header. So I want to make sure that they're in there. There we go. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and do the other four and I'll be back. All right, there you can see each of the holes has a set screw and has been filled with RTV. With all of that done, I can go ahead and remount the header. After sealing up those emissions or smog ports, I got the headers back installed. I've got the thermostat housing resealed for the fourth and final time. And I think I've got the carburetor dialed in. I did pull the um, idle adjustment screws, clean those up, got them back in, did some adjustments, and I think I got that thing dialed in. Um, as far as vacuum leaks go, I don't think I have any. So I think the original vacuum leak that I had was this fitting right here. This was on the back of the carburetor where the uh, PCV valve connects to the back of the carburetor. Um, this was loose. So when I went to tighten it, there was, this is actually like a little T-fitting here. Um, so when I went to tighten it, this T-fitting actually snapped off. And I, so I don't know if this was maybe already cracked, but I think a combination of this possibly being cracked and being loose was causing my vacuum issue. So I don't think I have any. I've run it, I sprayed everything down all around with some starting fluid and no change in RPM or anything. So I think now is the time to finally fire this thing up for the first time for you guys with it in the truck. Let's do it.
I'm so happy this is finally coming together. There you have it. The first official run of the 417 Stroker in the Dodge D100 project truck. I am so, so happy this thing is finally really coming together. Sounds just great. I hopefully, hopefully it shows up and sounds just as good for you guys as it did right here. So thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll catch you on the next one.